Hello and welcome to the Shooting Range Podcast. My name is TJT. You may recognize me from the breakdown and tale of the tape, other uh, video series on this channel. Uh, so this is going to be a wrestling podcast. This is going to be a wrestling video. And uh, unlike other Shooting Range podcasts that I've done in the past, uh, this one is going to be a little bit more broad. Uh, I did one... I think the last one I did was on Roman Reigns and basically just how audiences were sort of hindering the experience of WWE for a lot of people, myself included, uh, specifically, uh, you know, basically kind of screwing up the Universal title match at SummerSlam and rejecting, continuously rejecting Roman Reigns for now just some reason a lot of them seem to be bandwagon haters and some of them genuinely just don't like roman reigns for some reason and then but i think there are some people that genuinely they want to rebel against the booking of roman reigns and that sort of ties into what i'm going to be talking about today because it's a little bit more of a broad topic uh which is Vince McMahon is slowly and methodically killing his own creation in the WWE. And it's not, it's not like, it's not, look, this is a little bit of an over-exaggeration, but the things that I'm going to point out are very real issues. Uh, and they're going to, they, they span quite a few areas uh, where you can see this primarily is in Raw's booking, just just Raw's booking in general. Uh, I mean, if you just look at literally this past Monday night, there there are so many things that are just questionable that just make you sort of you know. I've been watching wrestling since two thousand two. I know about wrestling all the way back to the eighties. Like I, and just when you're that committed of a fan and when you've been around the product for so long, you get to a point where you start to, you know, use quote WWE logic and things make sense. And then stuff like Monday happens or the stuff that raw does in general happens. And you just are left scratching your head and go, Oh, okay. I thought I understood how this works. And now you're just kind of going out of your way to, mess mess this up so like one of those things clearly clearly was emelina i mean i didn't <laughs> as soon as the whole emelina thing was announced i had so many problems with it i first off it's a horrible misuse of emma uh it's it's putting away a gimmick that had no problems with it in the first place and evil emma it was a fantastic gimmick and though i didn't get to see a lot of it uh on the main roster like i was excited to see it because we don't really have a lot of those types of female superstars uh and i was i was i would love to see another one um and emma is so talented uh, that it was being put on, excuse me, put on somebody that can deliver in the ring. So I was really excited about it. Uh, and then you have the whole waiting for her to debut thing, which very quick there. I think very quickly we realized this isn't because they're building to something. This is because they don't know what to do with her. And then that was our doubts and our questions and our assumptions were basically all proven correct on Monday when she basically came out and said, yeah, we're not doing that anymore. To which I'm glad because hopefully this means now that we're going back to Evil Emma, which is a far superior gimmick and it fits her and her talents far better. Uh, it also poses, you know for whoever has the title either going into WrestleMania, probably coming out of WrestleMania, whoever comes out of WrestleMania with the title, it gives them an instant challenge in Evil Emma. 
Emelina would not have been a challenge. <laughs> Emelina is not a con contender for a title, at least in my opinion. Um, but I mean, you know, that's before I even saw what the character was going to be. But I think it's a safe assumption to say that. Uh, and it really is just, just inconsistency, inconsistent booking and start, stop booking and changing your mind at the last second and not having a plan. And those are, sadly, those have become staples of Vince McMahon. Uh, do I know for certain it's Vince McMahon behind the scenes? Of course not, but... I'm speculating, you know, I'm a fan, I've been a fan for a long time, uh, I've started to see certain patterns, and it just, it fits, it fits the mold. Another thing with Raw this past Monday is, the new, what is, what is the New Day doing right now? What is the New Day doing right now? And it's just, it's honestly like, okay, they took the titles off them for some reason, to put them on Cesaro and Sheamus for some reason, and then just to give them to the club for some reason. I mean, if you were going to go all around the world like that, then why not just give the club the titles and save Cesaro and Sheamus winning the titles for the first time for, I don't know, WrestleMania. Or what's probably going to happen is the Enzo and Cass are going to get the titles at WrestleMania, which also makes sense, but... You know, there's no reason that the New Day can't still be champions because right now there's no, there doesn't seem to be any plan for the champions in the club. There's no real plan for the Raw Tag Team Championships, and there's also no real plan for the United States Championship. It seems like because again, it was taken off Rusev, who was a solid mid card heel, to put it on Roman, who was just gonna end up going back to the main event anyway, regardless of how you feel about it, I mean, that's just fact of reality, that's on, I mean, it's honest, and people, you know, they bitch and moan about it, but at the same time, could you really, did, would you really ever want to see Brock Lesnar, when he was around initially, and in, during his initial run, put in the mid-card scene? No. I mean, Maybe he could stay there for, like, a bit, but he's all he's always going to come back to the main event scene. Same with guys like Kurt Angle. Uh, same with guys like Edge. Same with guys like Randy Orton. You know, they're just guys that, you know, they're meant for the main event. And while it's good for them to stick... He, John Cena's a perfect example. Yeah, he went to the mid-card for a little bit. But even then, he was still kind of main event still. It was just, like, main event light. <laughs> he was upper mid-card. Um, but yeah, but now the United States Championship is on Jericho, assumingly they're doing, they're going to build to, uh, Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho match at WrestleMania, I honestly don't see why, that couldn't be for the Universal Championship, it's a feud that we all want, and that's, that's just another thing, that's just another thing to point out, is that Vince doesn't seem to be interested in giving us what we want, and that's, that's genuinely concerning. Now, I went off in my, in my other shooting range video that, you know, uh, or I don't know, I, I can't recall if I mentioned it, so I'll just bring it up here. You know, if the company was really going to cater to our every want and our every desire, the company would run itself into the ground. Because, <laughs> I mean, I like some of these wrestling pages on Facebook, I see, you know, some of us, like, speculating and going, oh, I want to see this, or what if this happened, and some of the stuff is just ridiculous, <laughs> I mean, the, the company would run itself into the ground if they were to listen to us on everything, but, I mean, you have to listen to us with certain things, like, you know, even if you don't have Daniel Bryan win the 2000, what was it, 14 or 15? 15, yeah, even if you don't have Daniel Bryan win the 2015 Royal Rumble, don't eliminate him early, what's wrong with you, like, that's clearly a sense of not listening to your fans, having Batista come back in 2014 and win the Royal Rumble, having John Cena win the 2013 Royal Rumble, having, yeah, 
having Randy Orton win this Royal Rumble is just sort of head scratching. And even now, they're sort of retconning that a little bit on SmackDown. I mean, I don't know. I I still think that Orton is gonna somehow challenge Bray Wyatt, but at least at this point, they're basically saying, yeah, Orton's not number one contender anymore. He's taking it back, and now we're gonna have a now we're gonna have a battle royal to see who faces Bray Wyatt. Which, if they really go through with that, which I don't think they will, but if they really go through with that, how much of a slap in the face is that for anyone else that could have won that Royal Rumble? You could have used that so many different ways. <laughs> but instead, you just give it to Randy Orton just be- I mean, just because? I don't know, to pay him back for being Brock's bitch in the summertime? <laughs> that's, bas- that's probably basically it. Um, it's just weird, and it's inconsistent. And you- it's very clearly... It seems to be the ever-changing whims of Vince McMahon it's always everything is constantly changing every nothing is consistent the stories you think they're gonna go one way and they don't they go a weird other direction which sometimes is good it's good to keep us on our toes and be unpredictable and etc 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 at the same time it still has to make sense like elimination chain I talked a lot about raw and I mean we could talk about Raw's issues all day long, but let's not overlook SmackDown because SmackDown does have issues as seen in Elimination Chamber and the booking for at least the first part of Elimination Chamber was just odd. It was just odd. I mean, yeah, Becky go over Mickey clean in Mickey's first singles match, which why would you do that? Especially if you're just going to have a rematch on SmackDown two nights later and Mickey is going to even it up. Just switch that. What? Why does Becky have to win the first time? Like, that kills the feud right there uh, if they don't have a rematch. Like, it's like, it's almost, it's almost like they're afraid to have heels come out on top sometimes, which is evident in the handicap match. Because Ziggler was made to look really smart. Eliminate Kalisto. Now it's a one-on-one match. And then they screw it up by having Kalisto come back for some reason. And then they beat Dolph Ziggler. And it's just like, if the whole point of Ziggler's heel turn is because he was losing a lot, then once he turns heel, you kind of have to let him win now. Otherwise, he just looks like an idiot. (laughs) I mean, yeah, he got his heat back after the match, but but still, you know, we need actual results. Like, they say wins and losses don't really matter in wrestling, but <laughs> sometimes they do a little bit. <laughs> you know, if you just turned heel, maybe you should win a few matches. <laughs> And, you know, gain some momentum. And then you got Nikki Bella and Natalia. And why that ended in a double countout, I don't know. Why they're continuing this feud, I don't know. Especially if they're trying to build to John Cena and Nikki Bella versus Miz and Maurice. I don't know. I don't know why they're continuing it. I, 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 I don't. And maybe we don't get John Cena and Nikki versus Miz and Maurice. Okay, fine. I would love that. Then you gotta ask, okay, well, what's Miz gonna, what's Miz doing then? <laughs> at, at, at WrestleMania. Excuse me. I would have loved to instead have Miz and Maurice versus Dean and Renee at WrestleMania. That's the match that makes most sense to me. And it's a match they tease, and a lot of us were super into but for some reason now okay i mean honestly dean and baron corbin yeah that looks that looks good it looks like it's going to be a good match it looks like it's going to have a great build up uh maybe it's a multi man match but at the same time the way they're building it right now i would much rather see a one on one match then uh with maybe some sort of stipulation uh because honestly ambrose works better when there's a stipulation or when there's no dq <laughs> 
Um, and honestly, I think Baron Corbin does as well. That chairs match he had with Kalisto was much better than it shouldn't have. Uh, much better than it shouldn't have been. Uh, but honestly, really, I just, I, I gotta, I gotta have an issue, I, I have an issue with the Elimination Chamber because, and in, a, in, an, in essence, the Royal Rumble, because let's look at what happened here. John Cena takes the title off AJ Styles. Randy Orton wins the Royal Rumble. At Elimination Chamber, Bray Wyatt pins both Cena and Styles. Styles last to win the title. And then two nights later, Orton says he's not going to challenge Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. All those things combined just let you know that like what is wwe doing right now do they even know what they're doing right now are they confused are they backpedaling is this part of a storyline it doesn't seem like it at times like if why was just gonna win the title at elimination chamber why even take it off aj styles especially if styles was gonna be the last one in the chamber I, I mean, <laughs> what? Well, there was no point. John Cena was champion for two weeks, and then he lost the title. And then Orton renounces his Royal Rumble win. Why didn't you, to solve everything, why didn't you just have Bray Wyatt win the Royal Rumble? It's a new face. It accomplishes the basically the same thing, just at a different time. And I don't know, maybe have Orton win the title off Styles at the Chamber. Then you get the rematch, which is, you know, a match that a lot of people, Styles included, have said that they want to see. And Styles wants to do, which is AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. I mean, again, but this is a this is a sort of thing of if you have an overarching long term plan. And I just don't think WWE does right now. And honestly, that's a staple of Vince McMahon. Just to not really have a long-term plan. And to just kind of work as you go. And I feel like WrestleMania used to be this culmination of like a months long feud. Or everything coming to a head. And now it's just sort of... We get to January and we go, okay, what's the WrestleMania card going to be? Like, <laughs> and then the Royal Rumble basically tells you, this is what WrestleMania is going to be. <laughs> Instead of having it build. I mean, <sighs> this is just, this is just weird. It's just stupid. And then another mark of Vince McMahon is just being out of touch and not knowing or not caring about what we want to see and instead being too caught up in high profile sounding matches because i swear if goldberg actually takes the universal title off of kevin owens and it's goldberg versus brock lesnar for the title that is going to be the most uninteresting uninspired piece of crap championship match i don't want any of you bitching anymore about roman reigns versus brock because at least roman reigns versus brock was interesting <laughs> like brock versus goldberg i have no interest in seeing at all again i don't i know they're building up to a story and hopefully that story pays off but i don't care about it i do care about and i think a lot of us care about chris jericho versus kevin owens though and you could even make that for the title. I, What you do with the United States cha Championship, I mean, it's so easy then to write that into a story. Just have somebody like Sami Zayn win it off Chris Jericho. Have Kevin Owens cost him his title. I, and then you had one-on-one -on -one for the Universal Championship. How hard is that? And it's a match that we all want to see, but Vince McMahon, for some reason, is still hooked into the past. And apparently, like, 
what is go- what is putting the Universal Championship on Brock Lesnar really going to do? Nothing. He's going to leave. He's going to leave with the championship again. Then we're not going to have a Universal Championship on Raw again. Then, who does he lose it to? Does he lose it to Reigns? Oh, how happy will everyone be then? And then, you got to have, like, Brock Lesnar just losing again. <laughs> it's just... It's, I None of this makes any sense. And that is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. They don't think long term, and they don't think with common sense. I mean, just... <sighs> I could go on and on and on and on, but I think I've made my point. It's just, at this point, there's very few things that are actually making sense going into WrestleMania. Uh, Like I said, Dean Ambrose versus Baron Corbin makes sense and looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know what they're doing with Roman Reigns. Uh, I don't know, because they're still setting up Undertaker, like... I I don't know. Plus, it's going to come so far out of left field at Fastlane if he costs him the match against Strowman setting up a match at WrestleMania because like, we completely forgot about their stare down at Royal Rumble by now because nobody talks about it anymore. Um, and plus, wasn't this supposed to lead to some sort of heel turn? And it's just there's so much stuff just to give us Reigns versus Undertaker when all we wanted all along was John Cena versus The Undertaker. Which would have made so much sense. Ugh. And just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing with anybody these days. <laughs> and I guess on some level that's a good thing. Again, being unpredictable has been one of WWE's shortcomings. And they haven't done it nearly enough these last few years. But at the same time... I just ask that things make sense. I just ask that things build logically. I just ask that you give us stuff that we want to see or don't know that we want to see, like Samoa Joe. Oh my gosh, talk about the best of a bad situation. Samoa Joe has been on fire (laughs) since, since he came in. And they've been booking him very well. The Kevin Owens Y2J stuff has been done very well. It was a very, very well well executed implosion of the best friends angle. I thought that was really good. Oh, one thing I didn't mention about Raw, um, thanks for randomly giving us Bailey's first title win that you definitely couldn't have saved until WrestleMania when it would have been a far bigger deal. It would have ended Charlotte's arc as the queen of pay-per-view. It would have solidified Bailey. But no, just on some Raw. On some Raw. For some reason. Again, just... Okay. <laughs> Again, I think I've made my point. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this... Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.